Leland Kayla Rice from Omar Architects, project designer. This is the social uh, part of the learning commons right at the main lobby. Um, really the, the learning commons is at the heart of the school. Um, it is a collaborative space and very flexible and it kind of pours out from the inside space into the public space here. And there will be soft seating and also some uh, cafe style tables. One of the main goals of the organization of the school is to bring learning right to the front door. So that's what we're doing here. There's a classroom just to our right and then the admin to our left, both with uh, visibility of the front door and natural light. Uh, my name is Jim Littick and I'm Turner Construction's project manager on site. So this area over here will be the genius bar, the help desk. There are three tables. And the idea is that this entire space here remains flexible, with tables and chairs. Um, there's some soft seating that'll happen along the edge here, and round tables. And <clears throat> there will be carrels and workstations in this zone here, and then the stacks will be low and towards the, the window wall and in that, that last space. Behind us here are a series of project rooms and uh, workroom for the librarian. Um, technology is infused throughout the space, in the floor, in the walls, and um, should be a good space to, to work in. Separate the way the building's organized is all the labs in the classrooms for the most part are on the top two floors. And the first and the second floor are our athletics and the arts in those types of spaces, the cafeteria. Humanities and the, and the math and sciences together on two floors allows for you know collaboration between the different departments and um, you know some efficiencies in terms of utilizing the breakout spaces and things like that. We can work uh, from east to west. Um, physics uh, is at the very end on the east side, and as we work toward the west, uh, the biology labs uh, are facing south. That helps with uh, any kind of experiments um, with biology facing uh, the sunny side of the building. Chemistry labs uh, toward the west end at the far end uh, is earth science and then sort of intermingled in the middle are uh, mathematics classes. Uh, and then these middle core areas are teacher planning uh, and robotics is actually uh, down at the east end as well. It's just a, it's a bio. <clears throat> so this is one of four uh, biology labs. Um, as you can see, the tables are set up. Uh, they are movable, but uh, probably, probably pretty, pretty much can stay where they are right now. This is the fume hood. Yeah, I'm sorry. Um, yep. And. Uh, as you can see, the teacher can work on one side, students can, can see it uh, from the classroom side. It's a shared room, there's another lab uh, right across the hall, and then they share this preparation and storage room. I'm especially proud of the day lighting. There's wonderful, wonderful light in, in all the hallways and in the classrooms and the students and the teachers are really gonna enjoy that. In addition, in terms of the, the final finishes, uh, the paints are low voke as well as some of the materials have been recy are recycled materials that we've used for some of the finishing touches. And linoleum flooring, uh, that might not have been a choice a decade ago, but that's very eco-friendly and 
planet friendly, so we're very happy about a lot of the things that are going on inside the building. Absolutely. Get this on right on cue, too. Yeah. So the light shelf, which is this, um, helps with daylighting. So what happens is the sun will come through the high transom windows and bounce off the top surface of the shelf, which is a white reflective metal material. And then that light is, is dispersed on the ceiling, which makes the room feel brighter. And then it also works in tandem with the sunshade, which helps block the low um, sun uh, that's coming through the windows here. So we can have workstations along the perimeter, we can draw the shades when we need to, but for the most part, the sun shades will block that direct light. So we're trying to promote as much sun and much controlled light in the building as possible, especially in the classrooms. So the building is color coded to uh, mimic the, the path of the sun. So <clears throat> the east side of the building is a, a pale yellow color, and then um, the west end of the building is a, a deeper reddish orange color, and then in the center is sort of a pure orange uh, representing midday. And so you'll see that the, we have accent colors that are painted on things like the structure here, also the, the fins along the side. And then um, shortly there'll be paneling that will go in along uh, underneath the windows here, um, which not only protects the wall and creates a more durable surface, but we'll also be picking up on that color code and um, on the third floor, there will be three stripes for the third floor, and on the fourth floor, four stripes. Uh, there will also be signage, signs throughout the building that will also um, be part of the, the color coding. So it should be very intuitive and, um, you know, a directional uh, tool. In the you know, there are always opportunities to see through, um, both to the, you know, other side of the building, but also, not in this case, but out and through the building. So that helps you. Um, not only connect with other spaces, but um, uh, kind of visual cues of where you are. In the electrical, on the lighting, uh, there's uh, photo sensors that will monitor and measure the amount of light that's in the, re in the room being provided by natural daylight, and the amount of electricity will actually be scaled back, and uh, we, we should see lower consumption in our electrical bills as well. <laughs> Um, there are things, that, the main features I could point out are the building's envelope, which means the roof, the walls, and the windows have one of the highest ratings in terms of um, energy efficiency. And there are a number of other features that um, there's a system that reclaims the energy from the exhausted air. There's a system that uh, pulls heat. Uh, it, still lets, it still brings in 100% fresh air. It doesn't recycle the air, but it reclaims the energy, the heat, or the cooling um, at the respective times of the year, um, low volume t uh, toilets in terms of flushing. There's a lot of features. It's um, and we're going to have what's great is we're going to have a thing called a the building dashboard, which will be right in the front lobby, and the environmental club will maintain it. It'll be an opportunity for anybody coming into the building to see how many how much electricity we're using, how much gas we're burning, and um, yeah, it'll be really that'll be very cool. So in the classroom areas, um, the air conditioning is a little bit different than uh, you're probably used to. You know, typically uh, air conditioning just tries to cool off a room by blowing a lot of cold air uh, right into the room. In the classrooms, uh, it's a little bit different. Uh, you'll see in both corners these uh, stove pipes that come down. And the theory behind it is to, um, there are rooftop units uh, on, on top of the building they pull in outside air, and the theory behind it is that it's not really the temperature of the air that makes you comfortable, it's the, it's the humidity or the lack of humidity. So if the air is, is nice and comfortable from a humidity standpoint, then you tend to feel more comfortable. So the rooftop units actually take the outside air and they uh, dehumidify it. They wring out as much moisture uh, as they can and then heat it back up to a, a nice, comfortable temperature. So that air is actually delivered down through these two uh, stacks into these diffusers um, down in the casework. So what happens is that air comes out uh, of the diffusers. It's a little bit cooler than the air that's in the room. So naturally, it's going to hug the floor because it's, it, it's colder. Uh, as that air comes across the room, it finds a, a heat source. And the heat source is going to be a student or a teacher or a computer. That air heats up 
uh, and comes up uh, across your body and it just makes you feel more comfortable because the air has been de dehumidified. So you naturally feel uh, comfortable. And so that air, as it, as it heats up, rises up to the ceiling and is exhausted out um, through the two grills that are in the ceiling. That air goes directly back out to the outside. So there's no recirculated air in the classroom areas, um, which uh, really helps in terms of um, just keeping the air clean, you know, regenerating a lot of, uh, you know, viruses or colds or, you know, people may have the flu. So all of that air is taken out of the building and uh, it's exhausted uh, directly outside. Whichever end of the building uh, you're in, there's always a stair that's steps away, really. It's very close, right? You know, we really considered the whole traffic pattern. We have four floors. We have three major staircases, and the, and the hallways are wide. So I'm not thinking that there's going to be too many areas with the, cho with the choke points. I think um, the cafeteria is designed so when people are entering, they can go uh, to the left, to the right, or up and down stairs. I love the atrium spaces. Yeah. I think the atriums are beautiful, and I love the fact that we responded to both students and teachers who've said over and over again, please provide some space for us to work with partners and in small groups outside of the classroom. So level three uh, is the humanities floor, so that's uh, English, foreign language, social studies, uh, all on this floor. This is the performing arts uh, wing, uh, right in back of the stage. So as you walk in here, you'll see on the right hand side are ensemble and practice rooms and we'll walk straight back. There's actually a black box theater for, for practices and performances, a band room, chorus room, a recording studio. So there are, I think, four or five of these smaller uh, practice rooms. I do love the performing arts spaces. I think the auditorium is absolutely beautiful, and I think the music room and band room is fabulous. And this is called the, uh, the Black Box Theater, probably similar to your um, uh, the small theater in the school right now, but this can be used for either practices or performances. Um, there are drapes um, that can be pulled. Uh, the existing lighting that's in the auditorium now in the existing school is going to be brought over here and used in this room. Uh, and the size of, the, of this area is about the same size as the stage. So uh, they'll be able to, uh, to mimic, uh, you know, practice in here in a, in a uh, stage that's about the same size as what they'll be performing on. Uh, connected back here are two are dressing rooms um, that connect to lavatories, and then there's a, a straight shot back into the into the back of the stage. This is the recording studio. Uh, I think it's, is it called Colonial Sound? Oh, it's going to change. change, okay, so it's not Colonial Sound. But it is a recording studio. Uh, again, you can see a lot of uh, um, acoustical panels on the walls. Um, you can also see, you know, the walls are a lot thicker in these areas. Again, that's all to keep the acoustics um, where they should be. So we have wing space on either side, all of the rigging and curtain and lighting, our stage, uh, the orchestra pit will have a, they call a pit filler system, which allows for uh, the orchestra pit to be open, infilled at the, the lower uh, seating level, or up to the stage level to become a thrust so that performers can be out right in front of the audience. So the idea here is that um, the wood shop can be used as a wood shop, but also for set building and set construction. So you would fabricate back there. There's a spray booth for painting, and then uh, sets could come through these large, this large door through um, the next set of garage doors onto the stage. So it's all right next to each other, and sound is isolated and all that from the machine. So.
backstage. Oh, and I also love the gym. I think the performance gym is incredible. It's the right size, and I think our um, athletic teams are really going to be thrilled. Uh, all the light fixtures uh, in the main gymnasium are LEDs, so uh, very energy efficient. Uh, the bleachers, you can see they're, they're all the way out right now. They seat about 1,200 people. Uh, they, re they can retract um, back to the walls, uh, and then there are two uh, basketball courts that run uh, this way as well. So this is one of the locker rooms. Uh, starting to get the lockers in. These are the bases that are installed um, over to your right. Uh, that's one of the two team rooms. Will there be a door here? Or? No. I'm so glad we have a multi-purpose room because then the wrestling team no longer needs to wrestle in the cafeteria, in the cafeteria. and we have space for yoga. This is the multi-purpose room. Uh, this will be uh, a lot of different things. So it'll be wrestling. Uh, what else did we say? Dance. Dance, yoga, uh, a lot of different things. Cheerleading. Um, so it'll be a very active room. There's a wood floor underneath this protective surface here, so it's very similar to the performance gym. So this is the second gymnasium. Uh, Again, LED lights, like, like the performance gym, a different type of floor. This is. Uh, uh, more of a urethane uh, floor that will get a lot of use. Um, it's, quite it's not quite, is it a full size court? Just about. Well, we are just so uh, grateful for the both communities, Concord and Carlisle, in supporting building this new high school. And I know that everyone's going to be really, really proud and excited for it to open in April. <laughs>